Man. When was the last time you were around a bunch of vinyl like this? Been a long time for me. I mean, not 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 decades, of course, but you know, definitely a handful of years. I don't know. Less less than less than three years, but still a long time. Damn. I love being around. I'm the enemy of vinyl. Oh I, yeah. I have celebrated in the MP3. It, oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, you love the, the MP3 uh, itself? I don't love the MP3 for the audio, you know, the fidelity of it. I love it because all the years of skateboarding and BMX and, you know, tapes getting eaten up, the CD skipping, just the endless abuse. Uh, you can uh, take records anywhere, yeah. not, not on the go. Well, they made, I remember what, they used to have the portable record player, but that wasn't, you know, sufficient. Right, uh, and, right. Uh, but when the MP3 came out, you could you could skate to your heart's content, ride your bike like crazy. No more skips. I love the MP3 for the the convenience of it. But other than that, you know, we're talking about you know fidelity and and that that connection. You have a, this is where it'll be. You know, this yeah. the OG. Yeah, man. First record I ever bought was the uh, Black Sabbath's first record black sabbath no shit that's you paid for it you went in and bought it with your own money that's uh -huh. tight and then the second one was uh master of reality oh. two, <laughs> two black sabbath records yeah <laughs> dude and that was the start of just building your record collection yeah those were the the, the very first ones for me but uh, you know and that was uh i never thought i was actually making a collection more than i was just it became a collection uh, by default because you just, you know, if you're into music, you just start getting all the music you like. You start, you know, there's no, this is the the medium in which I got it in. It just starts collecting. Uh, you wouldn't see this with, the MP3 has made this into a little, I, a little iPod touch. Yeah, that's a little true. Time. <laughs> I will say that, like, as a, as a DJ, it's, I really do celebrate the MP3 as well because forever... We had, you know, it was, you could only take whatever you had on vinyl and you had to be, you know, a specific in what you were bringing to the party. And, you know, you just had to know you were bringing enough records for all that. As opposed to breaking my back, carrying 300 records to the gig, I got 40,000 songs in my computer yeah, yeah. and I can fuck it and, and I'm not breaking my back. Yeah, you can go whatever direction you want. You know? you know, something random and I literally just popped in my head um, was... Are there any, you know, like every DJ's got their little thing or their things that they do and, you know, their little uh, identifiers, mm -hmm. you know, like, like, uh, like, like for me, you know, like my, one of my favorites has always been DJ Shadow. You know, I think one of his famous things is, is the power nod, just boom, yeah. kills the power, you know, but it's part of his, it's part of his mix. It's, you know, it's not like he didn't hit it on accident or like that. That was that was meant to sound that way. He did that in pur on purpose. That yeah. was the effect. Like you can't you can't have that awkward silence when you're throwing in a mix. This mm -hmm. music's got to be moving, fading. You know the whole thing. But I want to know: is there anyone that just lets it drop for like ten seconds? Like I'm gonna put I'm gonna let this thing be quiet. I'm gonna pick out this one over here. I'm gonna put it on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, Does I, anyone do that? I have to say, I think I've seen. I know J Rock has done that before. Where like it's there's it's, 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 it's there's a thing you can when you really get in tune with the audience you're playing for and you're reading the crowd, and you know that you know you got them. You can you can do things like that. So you, you can, can you know you can like totally shut the wall of sound down, but now you can hear still. the you hear the murmur though. Yeah. You know, what are the people doing? How how are they dealing with that silence? This yeah. Do people use that? Because I that's it seems like a like a powerful thing, but I don't it don't ever hear it there's something about songs that i love that have like long fade outs where yeah. the song is fading out mm -hmm. you ain't gonna never hear that in no dj say no song fading out you no, know what i mean no. you don't, we don't get that far no, no <laughs> but that's no. like one of the most like that's one of my you know most exciting moments in in, in music is like when that thing is just going away and you're just hearing like, now you're starting to actually hear in some of the sickest parts of the song happening, but it's happening on the dip. It's going yeah. out like, you're like, where are they going with that? Come back. Yeah. Maybe one day we'll hear a lot of DJs kind of take chances more often with sound, which I think that, uh, I think a lot of cats are out there doing it now, but let's, let's see more, become more of a thing. It's 
a man of much knowledge. Taught me many things. And one of the best MCs to ever do it. Like, so funny when you, I, I, I did a show with him a few years back. I got a chance to play records before he went on and he commanded a crowd and played nothing but his classic songs and everyone had a blast. Shout out to KRS-One, one yeah. of the best to ever do it. Yes, KRS-One, love him. Oh, dude. Do you remember, I, me I bought this. Mm, look at that jam. <laughs> I bought, yeah, I remember I saved money from an allowance to buy. I got all the episodes from off of iTunes, man. It was great. The season one was their best. Yeah. They got so popular in season one, but halfway through season two, they were so, so big, it just started crumbling from within. <laughs> it was amazing. I love Miami Vice. Yeah, man, that was an amazing look, look show. At look, at, look at Don Johnson, just like, like Philip Michael Thomas. Damn it. Some motherfuckers, that shit was great. All of your favorite stuff or your most impressionable stuff, you know, those that included everything else we could pick out. Like every one of these things, you loved it so much, you know, listened to it so many times that like you know it from the very time, the second it starts. You're, already, you're named the tune before it's even finishing the first note of the song. You're like, there it is. Because yeah. that pitch hits you, bing. Love it. I got some old school Roz dude vinyl. <laughs> Roz a nation. <laughs> Raz Cas. Roz that's a nation. You have to do a cover of that Raz dude. Look at this on this on this album cover. Every Je uh, Jerry Every Reed. Man. That's the uh, Smokey and the Bandit. He's found and down. Damn. You don't even gotta say his name. No. Who's that? You already know. Don't even gotta say it. Apparently there's no jacket required at all. Nope. All right. Hey look, it's Ras Dude, but under another name. <laughs> oh shit, EMF, I hate this song. <laughs> Yo, unbelievable! It's just one of those songs that you just, it's, it defines the late, it, no, it's in 91, it's, I almost said 88, but it's just one of those songs that just defines that, like, it, he actually means he really loves it. When you hate something <laughs> like this, it's because you heard it so much, you know? <laughs> like Nirvana does that to me. I love Nirvana, but I'm, I hear it all the time, like it's everywhere. Yeah. Like nowhere can I go where Nirvana's not on. I'm like, nah. <sighs> Same thing with this. You just want to get your groove that's on because that, that's popping off anywhere in the world. You can go anywhere oh. in the world and hear that song at a oh. beach party right now. Yeah. Oh man, I, I know that song. <laughs> the things he oh. said. See, uh, 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 hates it that much. It's, I've, but I've heard it so much. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> there, I said it. <laughs> It's official. It's official. <laughs> oh, that's a good one right there. Which one? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Look at that right there. Foreigner. Man. This is like the way an album cover, like this is like the album covers I grew up with right here. Like that's just beautiful piece of art. And it says it right there. Feels like the first time. As soon as you hear that song, like man. A hit. It's just a straight up hit. All hits, man. They had heat. Yeah, they were coming with it. Hey, look at that. It's just green to help somebody. They were definitely. San Fernando Valley girls, though. What the? What? <laughs> All right. That makes me want to hear that. Toss that green back in the rack. Oh, I'm probably gonna grab it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, RIP the legend.
He produced the Bad Brains. He also did um, did the Weezer record. Did the Weezer Blue record. No way. And yeah. he also did the Green album. I was like, really? He did that, man. Did that get the good look, Rick Ocasek. Oh, there we go. Classic, timeless record. I love this one. You know, as going through so many records or seeing collections, man, you just kind of see a repetition of stuff. Yeah. Man, Poco, I think I saw that record more than any record. And, you know, there was a two year period where I saw like 5,000 Poco records. Oh, man. man. I'm, I'm sure as well you've probably seen like a lot of Pink Floyd albums in your life. Like even like these are some of the ones I don't see as often, which is awesome. But the you know Wish You Were Here or oh, for sure man. or Dark Side of the Moon, which I see. You know it's so funny when I see someone say, "Oh my God, they have a I just found a, a you know a, a Dark Side of the Moon and I got it for fifty dollars." Yeah. I'm like, "Oh, you get that? Like that's, exactly. That's maybe twenty dollars would be a fair price for sure." Nowadays. But 2019, man, the prices of records, you know, even 10 years ago compared to now, man, is such a difference, man. Vinyl is expected to outsell physical CDs for the first time. That's fake news. <laughs> I don't believe that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that at all. Like, ain't nobody got no record players. I don't yeah. know nobody with record players unless you're a DJ. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, it's they true. got records. We were touching on it earlier, you know, but it's the clarity on the audio is, is, is so much more exciting. But I think, you know, one of my faves with vinyl was um, always looking at the, all the pictures. If there was like any kind of inserts where you could read all the lyrics yeah. and all the credits, like who they think, man, who are all these people? Yeah, man, that's, yeah. And it led you to more music. Like mm -hmm. that's the drummer who played with on that album. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I'm going to check this other record out. Yep. Were you ever into the Ramones? The different styles they went through. Right. You know, same, you know, hearing the same music, but, you know, forged through different, you know, genre. Yeah. Even though it was their own genre they were creating the whole time. Yeah, then, and they, it was really kind of a trip how they, all their songs stayed the same length. It was like two and a half minutes or three minutes at most was like a long Ramon song. That's vibe. You know, you, 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 when you have you, the group of, that group of people had that vibe and that's what it took to do their, you know, their emotion to get through their feelings you know and they would only play like i think half hour sets because within you know and they play the songs no, they play like 40 songs yeah and just <laughs> go in there two minutes each you know just like nah, they never yeah. talked or anything during their set man love wow. this record this, this is my favorite rage record got everything here this is just the gem Ryman Simon. Oh, shit. For a long time, I didn't know that. Paul Simon wrote the Mardi Gras, the famous Bob James sample. Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's a Paul Simon song. <laughs> yeah, he covered it, right? Isn't the Bob James a cover? Yeah, it's a cover of, right. of a Paul. Yeah, there's, there's a break, you know, the... the Definitely by no doing of his own. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. He probably, he probably is tripping that he even has that much of a, like, credible stake yeah. in... Yeah. Hip hop, because it's one of the breaks that every DJ has to cut up at one point, no, in one way or another. As a DJ, you have to cut that up if you're really yeah. oh for sure getting in the culture of it. You yeah. know what I mean? You got to get doubles of the of Bob James Two album. What defines that? You know, as a DJ, how do you find it? like like for me? Are you looking? You know, uh, when I think about you know what's going through a DJ's mind, are you looking for obscure things to be different, or is it really because that was just like the the sickest beat, you know, like that had the greatest quality of like the cadence and all that, you know, like the swing on it was there, you know. Like, I mean, I know these are all elements, you know, there's no singular thing, but, you know, how do you, what be, what defines a legendary break, you know? A break, like it's Because just... I feel like there's room, always, always room for a new one, but I don't seem to hear the new ones. We like, we circle around the same breaks for, for like decades now. There's so many records that have come out that have never been in a digital form at all, you know, and there's still to be discovered. Well, all of us, I mean, we, we're never gonna hear all the music out there. It's just too ever, much. Ever. There's just too much, and there's so many records we're never gonna hear, even more vinyl that we'll never hear. Does it have to be a certain, uh, you know, audio quality, or is it more of the beat, you know? And Probably the beat, I think, uh, what, what defines it. Or is it even a melody? You know what I mean? Does it have to be always a beat? Because there's, 
No, yeah. no. It could be melody in there too. For me, it's like when you hear Drake. Bing, bling, 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 bling. You're like, yeah, like, what's that from? Or you know, because I've never searched that. It's one of those things. I mean, as soon as it drops, instant. You're you're you there. You know it. You're in it. That's a sound. You know. <laughs> so here we are, with the two owners, of uh, of this said store. Go ahead and please introduce yourself. I'm Stan High Fidelity Records. My name is Ray High Fidelity. Pay Ray. Pay Ray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, so tell me, how long has uh, how long you guys been up and running? So we have this location has been up for two months, but High Fidelity has been around for about seven years. Okay. Uh, this new incarnation of the of the uh, store is mine and Stan's ownership. Yes. So we're about to put a sign that says High Fidelity under new <laughs> management up outside, oh, and sure. uh, bring cool. our flavor to the record store world. I'm digging what I like. I see a lot of uh, I see a lot of cool rock on the walls and in the bins, man. Like that's really. I mean, like, come on, man. Yeah, yeah. Sound guard, the man. This is sick. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's yeah, from man. that era too. You know, when there was like so much digital music and mm. the vinyl pressings were fewer. So now heads are seeking to get kind of, you know, some 90s rock. You know, like I was saying about the, you know, holding the vinyl, looking at all the credits, the lyrics and the inserts with that came with them. Since I've been buying modern music and, and, and everything, I haven't seen a record cover in depth in over a decade. I haven't, yeah, it's true. you know, unless, unless I'm, I, I'm scrolling with the lyrics on the phone, yeah. I don't even know the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> the you know, I've never seen them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Don't know who's producing what. Yeah. No, I totally lost yeah. all of that, which was totally the norm with yeah. the, with the vinyl, you know, even CDs, you, you yeah. did it, but yeah. totally. nowhere near like what it was right. with the record. Yeah. And metal back in the day, you know, yeah. everybody liked to put who was doing each solo. So you knew who was <laughs> oh, on the right. left yeah. and the right, you know, yeah. you could solo, keep up with everybody. Yeah. Left channel, right channel. Guest yeah. vocals. Yeah. yeah. You knew who it was right away. The hunt for it is a trip. The more access we have in the digital realm, the harder it is to find this information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, who produced it? Yeah, like who played bass? That yeah, that you, you don't have I got it. digital booklets that I never opened. I don't okay. even know how to yeah, open a digital right. book. Yeah, yeah, never, yeah, never I tried to. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've, never, I've never had this <laughs> access. You know? Where can they find find you guys on the internets and the social medias uh, and the, the things? So our shop is High Fidelity LA. We're in the West Adams neighborhood of Los Angeles, right on Adams. If you're on the internet, HighFidelityLA.com, HighFidelityLA at all Everything the socials. Else. Discogs also. You can get there way quicker on the internet than you know the streets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs>